my name is Ellen and I'll be correcting this essay for you. For some reason this didn't come into my inbox, I'm not sure why, so I hope that it gets you in time so you can prepare for your exam. Let's take a look at what you wrote here. Uh, this is the one about ex-prisoners, so here's what you said. The world today presents a high rate of crime that is rooted uh, in, if something is rooted in something, are the sociological problems. Some believe that we can prevent teenage crimes by giving them lessons from the imprisoned people who share their regret and remorse tell about horrific details being in the captivity. On the contrary, others argue that such institutions cannot resolve the intrinsic problem of crime and that sentenced felons cannot be redisciplined. In this essay, two polarized opinions will be discussed, and personally I disagree with the idea to invite ex-prisoners to school. Okay. Um, very nice. You've done a lot of good things. Um, there is some error though. Um, so that's what I want to work on a little bit. I was nervous as I kept going on because it felt kind of long actually. And I want to point your opinion. Um, I want to point your attention to something. I was nervous that you weren't going to tell us your position, but you did. And so that was a relief. Um, I do feel it's a little long for an introduction and just to kind of prove my point, take a look at how long this is compared to your body paragraphs. It's like an identical length and that's not a good sign because you're not getting any points in terms of like task achievement or anything if, well, primarily task achievement, um, by writing a very long introduction. The way you improve your chances at task achievement is by developing your body paragraphs well. So my suggestion is always keep your introduction to a minimum and instead spend your time uh, developing your position, your position and your ideas and your um, support in your body paragraphs. Essentially, the introduction needs to do the following. It needs to briefly present the, the issue, okay? Um, say what the dilemma is, what the controversy, the debate is, and then present your opinion. That's it. I mean, you could essentially do it in two, maybe three sentences. Um, right. I mean, yours, let's see, you've got one, two, three, four. It's just, it was a lot. Okay. A lot when I take a look at this compared to your body paragraphs. Okay. So um, let's now try to correct some of the language because there were some little errors. Let's see. The world today presents a high rate of crime that is rooted in our sociological problems. Okay. Some believe that we can prevent teenage crime, get rid of the S, by giving who? It's not clear. By giving some, you know, I mean, it's not clear. This them, you think logically that it goes to teenagers, but it's not entirely clear grammatically. Okay, so what you could have said here is some believe that we can prevent teenage crime by giving the youth lessons from formerly imprisoned people. Okay, because they're not currently in jail. They've left jail and they've become good citizens, supposedly. Okay, so here you've got an inaccuracy. And then it's not they who share their regret, but who could share their regret and remorse, this is spelled wrong, talk about the horrific details of being in captivity without the. And then on the contrary here is used incorrectly. A lot of people do this. Um, on the contrary is a really misused um, linker by a lot of people. This should just be in contrast, okay? So definitely do some research what the difference is and how we use on the contrary. So others argue that such institutions cannot resolve the intrinsic problem of crime. So which institutions? We just talked about ex-prisoners, and ex-prisoners are not institutions. So using this vocabulary, it feels like a mistake in vocabulary, and it also feels like a mistake in coherence and cohesion because it's not doing what you want it to do in terms of linking, okay? Uh... And, and again, not sentenced felons, because these are people who have left prison, okay? So you could have said things like ex-convicts or uh, former prisoners, but not referring to them as current 
uh, felons, okay? They're ex-felons. So, um, in contrast, others argue that such measures, maybe you could have said measures, cannot resolve the intrinsic problem of crime and that ex-felons cannot be re redisciplined. In this essay, um, okay, it's not too polarized, but it's these polarized opinions, okay? Because this is an example of how you could make this cohesive. Because when you say two polarized opinions, it could be any two polarized opinions. So you want to refer back to the opinions you've expressed and say, these polarized opinions will be discussed. And personally, I disagree with the idea uh, to invite experts into the school. Okay. So yeah, I feel like you were definitely trying to use some higher level language and that's fine. But I did see enough mistakes in the use of language so that um, it might prevent you from getting the score you need, okay? There was enough inaccuracy despite the fact that you used some nice language. Let's see what you did in your body. In our society, it is common, not common that, but it's common for, mm, we just say it is common for something. So, uh, Let's do it the way you did it. Let's see. In our society, it is common that prisoners are severely, and that's not how you spell severely, stigmatized even after they are released from prisons. In fact, it was reported in the U.S. Prison Research Journal that more than half of ex-prisoners were put back in prison due to, this is incorrect, not the repeated felony, due to, um, uh, Returning to crime or due to a return to crime would have been perfect. Okay. Uh, I think it's called recidivism. Actually, you could have said that due to recidivism. It's when you go back to doing something. Um, okay. It is because not a cohabitation. This requires no article. It is because, or not even it, this is because cohabitation with other criminals has long-term negative effects on mental health and predisposes uh, people, okay, or ex-criminals or ex-convicts <clears throat> to repeated misconduct. Again, so two instead of four and misconduct singular. Thus, finding and inviting a good <coughs> ex-convict is an extremely difficult task. Okay. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about in this essay is how to analyze the question properly. So look at this. It is often argued that these are the best people. Okay. And so I want to also talk about that word, the best. What are they actually telling us here? They are... Um, clearly making a comparison, okay, or maybe it's not so clear, maybe it's indirect, but there's definitely reference to a comparison here, and they're telling us that they are the best people, so it kind of then begs the question, well, compared to whom, okay, so this is what you're supposed to talk about, whether they are the best or not, and if they are not the best, well, then perhaps who is, okay, so you're telling us here that, no, they're not good. This is impossible. All right. We're going to come back to this, but I want you to think about what I just said. And I want to see what you said here. On the other hand, it is psychologically careful with your spelling, effective to demonstrate to teenagers how crime can be detrimental for them. Ex-prisoners may tell their story and scare, not scary, scare, off teenagers from future fugitive actions. This is not a collocation that works here. Okay from future illegal actions would have been fine. For example, in my childhood, the government and school took several preventative measures by showing the terrific end of addicts. I don't think you mean terrific. I think you mean horrific, no? So such videos effectively turned us off from trying drugs. Therefore, if there are, uh, if there are good people that would like to contribute by talking to teenagers, this would definitely help. Who are these good people? Are they ex-criminals? Are they ex-drug users? That's unclear, okay? To summarize in theory, an insider, an insider's talk, you need an, uh, an apostrophe here, with, I don't understand this, an insider 
talk with previously convicted people. All right, so let's try this again. To summarize, in theory, a talk with previously convicted people will raise, not rise, second thoughts in young minds and hopefully stop crime. However, factually, comma, it is impossible to find such adults, comma, who are not traumatized by imprisonment, get rid of that, and, juris and the judicial system, I would have said, and in a good state of mind to talk about their painful time in prison. Okay. So what I see here is that you do know some really nice vocabulary. There are some instances where you use some nice collocations, and I liked it. But unfortunately, it wasn't consistent. There are a number of, of areas and, and places where your vocabulary, your collocations um, is incorrect. Okay? Um, and then there were little problems with prepositions. There were little problems with articles, things like that. Um, for me, however, I want to focus a little bit on your task achievement, which I implied in a couple of places I thought wasn't really, um, as focused and as developed as it should have been. So, um, let's see here. I would have liked again, a little more. I wouldn't want you to said why they're not the best people. So the first thing you need is that um, you need a good topic sentence, okay? So something, again, referring back to the the, the, the topic, saying that um, there are numerous reasons why ex-convicts are not the ideal people to talk to young people. Um, and you can say, this is because prisoners are severely stigmatized after they are released, okay? And then... Um, A better link here, okay, not right away to this, uh, not right away to this, um, this example, but instead say, uh, one issue that occurs is that, uh, there are high recidivism rates and felons or ex-felons return to their life of crime. And then you could say, in fact, it was reported that, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And you can also say, uh, this is because um, cohabitation with other criminal has long-term effect, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what you could have done. Now, let's talk a little bit more about this. What does the essay say to you again? It says, um, people become good people in life, uh, good citizens. And they are the best people. So if you think about it, the essay is not talking about these people here who return to crime. Instead, they are talking about the people who have become good citizens. Okay? So you're talking about the group who clearly would not be um, effective. Okay? The people who return to crime. The essay that was asking you to talk about these people who... Um, have turned their life around. So maybe this is who you should have talked about a little more. Maybe you could have said, yes, it's true. There are people like this, et cetera, et cetera. And then you could have said, however, they are really hard to find because um, factually we know that recidivism rates are so high that these people are clearly not enough to go around and to help have any sort of effective um, you know, impact on young people because there's just so few of them. So you could have talked about it like this. Do you understand what I mean? Okay. Um, and here, I really think you could have talked about more as well. You could have talked about why they are the best people because that's what they've asked you, the best people. Okay. So why, what are they going to tell me or any other teen? What are they going to tell me that a teacher couldn't tell me, or that a police officer, or a coach, or an athlete, or somebody. Why are these ex-criminals the best? All right, you need to develop that a little more. Okay, so a lot of information, um, a lot of yes. comments and feedback. I hope you find it helpful. I hope it kind of gives you an idea of what you need to be doing, what you need to be writing in these essays. Uh, like I said, I hope we get this to you in time. Let me know if you have any questions. 
I think that um, we can certainly help you to improve and to prepare for IELTS since you need that seven. So take a look at the packages that are available for you to continue to work with us. And I hope we can see more work from you in the future. Good luck.